Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Today, Brazil is football, but is the game for men only? So we're about to find out how much you and our online community like a women's football. Lika Vlau is our digital producer of the stream. I've got a feeling that you already know <laughs> what's yes. happening out there online. Yes. Well, one way to find that out is to see the reaction, what sure. people are tweeting. So I will say, even with ma major support like this, this is Brazil's first female president with the Brazilian female football players. This is a tweet from last year. You see support like that, Still, there are people in our community who don't seem to think there'll ever be much of a market for female football. Ricky tweets, does anyone watch women's soccer? We want you to answer that Ooh, question. Join Ricky's this in conversation trouble. as well. <laughs> Tweet us your questions and your comments with hashtag AJStream. And also don't forget to check us out on Facebook as well. You can go to facebook.com slash AJStream and there you can see the stories that we're following. And if you've got a great idea for a future episode, well, you can pop it in there too. We will see it. And if we like it, you too could be in the stream. I'm Dr. Mitch Abrams. I'm a sports psychologist and the founder of Learned Excellence for Athletes, and I'm in the stream. Brazil is synonymous with some of the world's most renowned and talented names in football. But the land of Pele and Ronaldo is also home to 400,000 women footballers, most of whom you probably don't know. From 1941 until 1979, Brazilian women were legally banned from playing the sport. And though it's been more than 30 years since that ban was lifted, professional women players struggle with extremely low salaries, zero sponsorship and immense prejudice. Now, women are often seen as accessories to the game instead of the actual stars. So while millions of eyes are on the men who play for Brazil, what will it take for their women players to be just as successful? Joining us from Rio de Janeiro, we have Caitlin. Fisher. She's a former pro football player in Brazil and is co-founder of the Guerrillas Project. That's a collective that uses football to promote gender justice. From Sao Paulo, we have Beatriz Vaz El Silva, known to most as Bia. She's a Brazilian footballer with Ferroviaria and also plays for the Brazilian national team. Uh, from Paso Fundo in the south of Brazil, Joana Borigo is a gender consultant. So ladies, it's great to have you here in the stream. Let me start. I never thought I'd get to talk to a Brazilian football player for the national team, but Bia, yes, I get to talk to you. So here we have this passion for football in Brazil. How would you sum it up, the love of football that Brazilians have? Oh, we just breed soccer. We born and uh, when we start to walk, and you can kick something, you kick it like a ball. So we just breathe that all, every day and all the time. And right. this is a great time for us right now. Sure, so it's in your DNA. So there's that passion for football in Brazil. Everybody loves it. And then you say, I want to be a professional woman's football player. What's that reaction like? Um, my father just loved soccer and he really support me. At, as the same as my mother, but my parent, my grandparents uh, of my parents' size, they uh, they really traditional and they say like, oh, I don't think she should to play it. But most of my family and I have so many friends, they really support me. But this is not the reality of most of the players here in Brazil. Sure. They, they, we are really going through a, a hard time, and their parents sometimes really do not like it but now it's a little bit slow but things changing and i hope one day i can see girls playing all over the fields here in brazil sure I, I like that voice of hope caitlin you went to brazil you wanted to play in brazil you wanted to play in south america that immediate image that brazilians have of female football players what is it in a nutshell you can be candid well, I mean, one of the first words that I learned when I got here was the word preconceito, which translates to prejudice in English. Um, and it was one of the most common words around the women's football game. Uh, my teammates, you know, would tell me that their parents didn't want them to play, that siblings and others didn't want them to play. And when I asked why, the answer was preconceito. Um, and we, I experienced this myself on the Santos women's team, not being able to use a lot of the resources and facilities that the S Santos men's team had. Um, and. I mean, Let's th so slow, slow down a bit, Caitlin. So you couldn't use the facilities that the men had. So how does that work out? You, you, you're at the same 
stadium, right? We share the same canteen. Right. Ta ta explain same, that um, to us. Break it down. Yeah. Well, I think the, it, it's interesting just how explicit it was. Um, we see this in lots of other countries and lots of other areas, but when I arrived at Santos, we had the same team with the same name, the same name, the same logo. We were Santos. And, and Santos is Pele's club. Santos is That's mega. Right. Santos is like the Man U of Brazil, but bigger. That's right. Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And I mean, really, the only thing we had in common with them was our name. And we wore the men's old uniforms from eight years prior. We couldn't use the stadium or the training pitches, the buses. Uh, we had to wash our uniforms by hand. And who, yet who washes were, the guys' were, uniforms? Uh, the the laundromat. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Malika. Well, Joanna, I, I heard you laughing there. So I want to direct this tweet to you. We asked our community why they think the Brazil men football team gets more attention than the women's team. And Sanella tweets in, the answer is always rooted in society and culture. People still think it isn't right for whatever silly reason. She says, is there something, of course, without generalizing too much here, is there something prevailing within society uh, that pushes women away from this? Absolutely. I think that's a very, uh, a very um, spot on comment that was made. And the, the, the roots of this problem are obviously not just in football, but it's, you know, the problem in the whole of society that is still a lot sexist and a lot resistant to women who want to dare to do the things that we are accustomed to seeing men doing. So uh, a female footballer in Brazil would, would pose a series of challenging uh, images and uh, would necessarily cause some disruption. And this is mainly because people expect to see men and women in very specific roles. So when there's a diversion of uh, those expectations, things, things tend to get a little bit confusing. So yeah, I think that tweet is, is very um, spot on about the issue. So Bia, I was listening to you as you were talking about Brazil and football, and there's also there's certain stereotypes that, that sort of abound. I want to share this little ad with everybody. It's Adriana Lima. She's a Brazilian model. And this is a way that um, the World Cup has been promoted overseas. I'll just show it to you, and then you can come to your own conclusions. <laughs> In my country, this is football. See, I don't know about the guys, but my mouth is doing, huh? <laughs> what is going on here? How does that, that sexiness, that sassiness of women in a football culture, how does that impact you as a, as a woman football player? Um, I think it, it's, they want to see us play like this and we are pretty, but in our way, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we are really tough women and we go to the field to play soccer. We don't want to, to date thinking like, oh, they, they are really pretty or they, uh, it's not the point. We just want to go to the field and put our hearts in the field, play hard and do what we want and what we love it. So um, I feel a little bit disappoint disappointed when they, they show things like that, but it's how most of the men and how most of the, the people in the world look at us and think about soccer. So. Okay, so, so Caitlin, this idea of being pretty and being a, a female football player, I know that you've experienced that. Can you tell us how you experience it on a sort of a day-to-day -day level when you're trying to play games? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to look at how pressure around femininity and expectations of kind of upholding this hyper-feminine image um, have imprinted themselves on the game. Um, you know, you've been seeing, you see a lot of pressure in, on, my, on the Santos team in 2010 when I was back there playing. Um, you know, you had female players putting on makeup before a game. We were given uniforms that were very tight to try to show off our figures um, that actually inhibited us from moving in many ways, uh, you know, inhibiting our game as, as athletes. Um, so you absolutely see that. And I think this, this 
um, this video clip you just showed, the advertisement is um, indicative of kind of the larger discourse that's out there right now around the cup. And with our project, we've been really trying to, to counter that. And we saw some images of female players playing, but to really show powerful, uplifting, strong female bodies to counter this larger discourse um, around the World Cup, women, female, football, and Brazil. Who's telling you? And Who's yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, just, just following from something that I found that Bia said, it's really quite yeah. powerful about not really caring about looking pretty in the field and being pretty in different ways. And I think that this is, as Caitlin was saying, part of a larger discourse in Brazil, especially in Brazil, more prominently in Brazil, where women are expected to be first and foremost pretty and attractive and sexy. And uh, this is what I was trying to say before when I said that, you know, when a, when a strong athletic female body uh, appears, it causes some disruption because the expectation is that women are in, in themselves, first and foremost, uh, interested in looking pretty and in looking hot. And, you know, Guerreras and the football uh, and the project that we're doing kind of comes to challenge that assumption that, you know, we are, it never occurs to people that women can actually just be interested in the game as well and not being pretty and then interested in the game. I think that's a very bad, a very um, a strong assumption about the feminine, about femininity and about women wanting or desiring to be first and foremost, you know, attractive when we're here to show that women want to play ball and win trophies and just kick ass basically right well joanna i want to i want to share two views that uh, just popped up for us on twitter this is theodore and he says it's sad but most people will watch for the sex appeal or they won't watch at all and on the other hand we got this tweet from chandrima and she says women have too long been treated as mere sex symbols without substance women like marta and she references the brazilian football player seen in this picture here are changing that uh, but there's this facebook comment caitlin uh, who puts this all kind of into perspective, his perspective. Bill says, look, they don't make money. It's all business. It's not sexist. It's not personal. Is the bottom line about the money? Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a great question. And of, of course, it's something that we as female players um, ask ourselves that we within the project kind of larger movement around social justice are asking ourselves how if you look at the women's game, you know, it constantly comes back to this is, you know, at the pro level, this is a business. Um, and you have to think about it from the market perspective. And um, if, you know, if you don't have a fan base that media are not going to want to cover it, brands aren't going to want to invest, there's no visibility, um, you know, sponsors and others aren't going to come in. So it's, it's, it's kind of a vicious cycle of, you know, at what point and where do you intervene in that cycle to, to start to murar cabezas, we say, to move minds? Um, and, and how does that intervention take place? Um, we're, we're really looking underneath the field. We're looking at what is at the root of, of this prejudice and how can we as female players use our stories and experiences out in the community in really a grassroots way to, to talk to families and parents and open up a gender dialogue that really addresses some of these narrow scripts of femininity and masculinity that also really are harmful to men as well. I know we're talking about the business angle here. I want you to have a look at something on my laptop. So we've got uh, Messi here, Leon Messi plays for Argentina. You may have noticed him once or twice during the World Cup. We have <laughs> Marta here, Marta Vieira da Silva. She's probably the most famous Brazilian football player in the world. And she has been, they both were voted in this picture as football player of the year. So you can see they're like, like for like in terms of the highest woman football player, the best guy football player. We put together a little graphic to show you the discrepancy between their pay. Let's check it out. So there we have Marta. And there we have Messi. Um, <laughs> Marta earns one fifteenth of the salary of Lionel Messi. Uh, Bia, how rich are you? Are you rolling in it? You play for Brazil's national team. Uh, yeah, we are not having uh, like a really good support. Even you, you go to the national team, it's still really hard to play. So when you are a soccer player here in Brazil, if you want to think about money, Go do something else. It's not we're oh. not going to have a lot of money if you play. Uh, Marta is a really talented player. She she has a really good support, so she goes to another country. But if she's still here in Brazil, I don't think she she could have so many success successful as she's having right now. So sure, sure. Uh, Malika, 
Well, in using that same kind of comparison, the mm. Messi versus Marta, there's mm. this tweet from Carbo who shows a picture of them. Marta has won the Football Player of the Year, FIFA Player of the Year, five times. Well, Messi's won it four, and that's what this graphic shows. Uh, but Jose on Facebook says, you can't just say, I want better pay just for the sake of equality. Fans determine the supply and the demand, and the demands are speed, strength, and smart strategy. Caitlin, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's a great point. And the question is, okay, if fans are determining it, well, I, you know, at what point do we create opportunities for fans to see it? Right now, women's football around the world is pretty much invisible. People don't know when the games are. They're not playing in the stadiums. Um, the schedules aren't out there. Media is not covering it. So it's almost as if it hasn't been given a chance. Um, and as you saw in Brazil, it was banned for 38 years. You know, when you think about kind of delayed development, if this this is a period where, um, you know, it the, maybe the women's game needs to be incubated in many ways. Of we need to create opportunities for it to bring it forward um, and, and make it visible so that fans have a chance to like it. You know, one of the most it's amazing and interesting things that we found here in Brazil is the Santos women's team in 2008 to 2012 was one of the top teams in Latin America. And it, you actually saw a lot of the Santos men's fans from the men's team started to come over and cheer for the women's team because the men's Santos team wasn't doing as well. Uh, the women were doing really well. And immediately the fan base started growing because people started seeing it. They started watching it and, and enjoying it. And, and some, many enjoyed it saying they enjoyed it more than the men's game. Um, and and yeah, time and just Caitlin, to this point. Yeah, go ahead. No, just following from what you were saying about this, you know, this, I, I've been following this, the comments on Twitter as well. And just like some people, uh, people have this tendency to say that, oh, we don't see it because it's not visible. And it, this becomes a little bit of a chicken and egg situation because it's not visible because there's no opportunity for the sport to be shown. But as Caitlin was saying, is the moment the moment the team starts to achieve something, and the moment that Marta, Marta becomes five-time champion of the year, they, they do become known. They do get uh, the recognition that they deserve. So this conversation about people not being interested because it's not uh, available, uh, well, how do we even begin to start changing that? And this is something that we've been been trying to do with Guerreros to give a platform for these voices, for these women, for these bodies, for these you know these drives to make football a female football a thing to to have a space for it for us to to be able to provide a platform for all these voices to be collected so that you know the more um, availability there is there, there is for people to actually latch on to uh, the, the the less this conversation becomes a chicken and egg situation that is right now that oh we don't see it because it's not available. Well, we're trying to make this available as much as possible. Well, Joanna, as part of that platform, we have this video comment from someone who works on uh, female empowerment programs. And he has a, a comment I'd like you to have a listen to. Okay, I think one of the main challenges that anybody working with girls and women in Brazil uh, with football is the fact that uh, it's very undervalued throughout the education system. So, um, Schools don't give much focus on women's football at all or on physical education as part of the whole educational process. John, I see you nodding your head there. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is a very pertinent comment and this is what, when Caitlin says that we're working underneath the field, this is exactly what we mean. We're, we're, we're working not just on football because we understand uh, this inability of, uh, of women to, uh, to achieve a space in football as a symptom of a larger discourse on sexism and on keeping women aside in many, many areas. And some instances in society, like football, will be uh, uh, absolutely male-led. And it's always going to be, well, not hopefully not always, but at the moment it's a struggle for us to make the point that these women are interested, they like the game, they want to play the game, they want to have as much recognition as the men have, but not out of charity, not of, uh, out of just, you know, oh, let's give these women a chance but rather because this is their life. This is what uh, uh, we've been working with Guerreros for what, five years now, right, Caitlin? And you know, the, the, the more we talk to players, the more we talk to the community, the more we get positive feedback from people saying, yes, we want people to understand that this is our life. This is our reality. This is, you know, the, the lack of space is a difficulty, but we want to make that space happen. And this is, this cannot only happen in the football pitch. This cannot only happen with the, the you know, the formal football institutions, but it's a, it's a larger change within society that admits that women um, are interested in all sorts of things. You know, irrespective of them being traditionally male or female, women can have interest in all sorts of things. So Bia, if there was a team in the world that you could play for, which team would you pick right now? 
pretending that no Brazilians are actually listening. Because <laughs> they might be a little bit upset if you picked another one. But what team are you saying, oh, I really envy that team. I envy that, that team in terms of their facilities, how much respect they get, how much TV coverage they get. Is there a team out there that you think, I'd love Brazil to have that? Um, it's not because I'm playing here right now, but the team, when I play, was giving to us like a really good support. Mm. Uh, it's a Ferroviária de Araraquara. They have a uh, women's, uh, the the men's soccer team, and and we have like a really good support. The government try to to give some supply to us, uh -huh. and so we are we are having a, a, a great time. But uh, we are not like so big as Santos or any any other team, but. Uh, right now, I think we are in a really good situation, but we are really lucky. Uh, we are in a really small town, and they they try to help us. Uh -huh. And the people around the society around they they really enjoy our games. Uh, in the beginning, they they don't care too much, but we start to be a champion. We start to play really well. So now they they like it and they support it. So it, it's a great opportunity. To show them our qualities, and and I really thank them for give to us a, a, a opportunity to yeah. to show them. When's your next national game? When will Brazil next be playing on an international platform? Uh, we have a really good and important tournament. Uh -huh. Will be in Agos, so we have to win this to classify to the next World Cup which will be in Canada next year. Next year. What do you think your chances might be? Of course, we're, we're, we're sitting right now here with Brazil hosting the World Cup, but could we have Brazilian women's football team maybe taking home the World Cup for women next year? What do you think? I really think we can next year. We, uh, we have a few changes right now. Uh -huh. And for the next year, I think we'll be really, really strong. But we're gonna uh, really work hard, but I'm not sure about next year. We we have a really good chance, but depend a lot of things. Uh, I believe in you, Bia. Sure. Well, after yeah, England, believe, believe actually. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? And Nigeria. But other than you that, know, you're my favorite. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Vai Brasil! Oh, okay. Now, now I've actually lowered the tone of the entire conversation. Malika, rescue me. Well, I will say, especially with that last outburst, we have this tweet from Jeff, and he says, let's first look at what sex watches the game the most. Men will do anything to watch a soccer game. Women may forego. And I, I, I dare to say, especially with the people on our show today who are planning to watch a game very soon, that that's not true. Um, but I want to leave us off with this. This is a tweet from someone who says that we're talking about this, but it's, of course, not just Brazil. This person says, I challenge you to show which country treats women footballers like their male counterparts. I wish there were, was one. Look at my computer here. This is a baby Caitlin when she was playing football. She looks adorable. We have one sentence for you, Caitlin, to share with the little girls around the world who are watching a news network. Why are they doing that? I do not know. But what would you tell the little girls around the world about football slash soccer? Uh, that it's there, that it's there for you to play. Um, one of the most important things for me when I was young was seeing role models. Right. Positive, powerful female athletes, soccer players, role models. Um, when I was 16 years old, the 1999 Women's World Cup sure. happened. Uh, the U.S. won. Uh, Julie Saudi, Christine Lilly, Brendy Chastain. I can tell you to this wow. day. I remember those names. Every single one of them. All and, right. I mean, they changed my reality of this idea that you can't be what you can't see. Sure. Um, and I'm hearing fireworks in the background, which is our cue for wrapping up because you are hosting the World Cup out there in Brazil. People are ready to watch football and there's fireworks going on because that is what you do in Brazil when you watch the game. Caitlin Fisher, Joanna Barigu and Beatriz Vaz El Silva, thank you so much for joining us on this conversation about thank women you. football players in Brazil. We are changing topic for our next show. We want to ask what pushes someone to carry out a suicide bombing? We get into the minds of the men and the women behind these attacks. Until then, we'll see you online. Thanks for watching.